All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Lacey Lee, and today for my genre analysis presentation, I will be working with lab reports in a K-12 setting. What are lab reports? Let's start off by talking about what exactly am I studying. So science lab reports are designed particularly for the context of designing and reporting on scientific investigations done in a science lab and beyond. So this is what we would do if we're writing out an experiment in class. These are where we'll put our thoughts. This is where we'll put our um, findings. This is the way to organize our thoughts and findings and be able to reflect accurately back on what we found during these experiments. Why did I choose lab reports? Well, the STEM field is also, it's one very close to my heart. I am a math teacher by, by heart. And um, I just think that with how we are moving in the world, STEM is becoming more of a focused area of study. I'm seeing more and more schools add STEM products, uh, robotics, actual STEM classes into their school curriculum to try and get us more motivated to move into fields like that. Um, and just in basic science classes, um, students are always doing exploratory assign uh excuse me, exploratory activities. And this is just a way to get them to think about what they are doing, how they should be doing it, what they can be doing better to reach their full potential. And this is just a way to put it in a setting that is used by a lot more people than just in that classroom setting. Um, to get my resources, I had to contact a few people. I am a math teacher. It's very hard to get people talking about science um but i did my science team on campus was very helpful they said this is what you can use this is what we do in school this is how we do it so i found that really interesting i did have to talk to a couple of my friends that teach primary and secondary to see how what where but because i'm not on that campus i don't have access to those materials due to copyright laws so they were able to send me some materials from Teachers Pay Teachers that were that were good because we all know that some of them aren't very good. Um, I was able to collect one from a K-2, one from a 4-5, two from 6-8 because, you know, that's where I teach, <laughs> and a one from 9-12, and just able to look at those different types of reports given. So a lot of the key features in these reports is that they usually follow the same pattern. There's usually a front-loading background information beforehand at the beginning. Usually that is, this is what we're talking about today. Here are some vocabulary words. Here are what you need to know before you can begin this experiment. Um, as we progress through the grade levels, you see that the front-loading becomes more open-ended. It becomes fill in the blank it becomes more of instead of this is what it is do you remember what it is then we're given our objective why are we learning this or why are we doing this activity and what should be the end result or what are we looking for for the end results and then usually we're given our materials charts what we need to be successful and then our procedure a lot of the procedures i've seen have been interesting there's no real, like, right way to write a procedure. I've seen some where they're all bulleted words, um, word, word steps. I've seen some where they're numbered one, two, three, four. I've seen um, a few being used with transition words rather than just saying, first I do this. They'll say, first I do this, then I do this, then I do this. Um, and then I've seen some that are all pictorial. They show you Jack picked up the pumpkin or... Sally pushed the boat. Um, but I've also seen some that are pictorial and wordy for those that don't quite understand the pictures. So that's the most diverse thing I've come across while looking at these different types of lab reports is your procedure. There's not real a real right way to do it. So I, was, I found that very interesting. And then we're given a conclusion. What were the end results? Were you right? Yes or no? And then reflection questions. These reflection questions are usually just, did I get this right? Did I get this wrong? What can I do differently with 
this experiment to get the answer I wanted, or what can I do to make it a little more far uh, to make it a little more farther in this field of study? And usually, these reflection questions are interesting. They're usually they go from concrete to abstract. They usually start with what happened, what can we change, what did you learn, and it just moves on from that sort of thinking. Linguistic features. Um, the samples I looked at mostly were for L's. They don't overload you with academic vocabulary. They're very forward, straight to the point. If there are ones that are that are like you need to know the vocabulary, a lot of the ones I've seen are using fill in the blank or they have a word bank. Um, and again, usually that's mostly in the front loading section of the report. Um, these are supposed to be easy to read because, I mean, science can be dangerous in certain situations and esoteric words just could be the difference between somebody losing a finger. So they're usually written in common language and any, like, academic vocabulary is usually at the front along with any warnings that may happen. Um, this is my K-2 through two sample. It's very cute, very, very K, like, kindergarten-y. We start out with our overview. You see, this is why we're doing this. Here's our materials. And then in this specific procedure, it's bullet points. And then at the front, we're given our questions and discussion pieces, which I have found usually go at the end. So this one was a little different. But we also see on this third page that it asks for your discussion as well. Um, the actual thinking process, the procedures, the observations are very cute friendly they're pictorial they show you like how big is your pumpkin is it's a small one a medium one or a large one they use a uni uh, a classroom universal way to measure in cubes rather than say inches or centimeters um and then it tells you what we want to know we want to know does the pumpkin float or sink what do you think and like as a kindergarten teacher or kindergarten student, I can be, oh, my pumpkin's above the water. I think it'll float. If it's below, I think it sinks. So they understand that float means it goes above the water. Sink means go below. And then you'll see what actually happened. And the observation piece, the reflections at the end, it does offer you to write or draw what you think will happen because some students might not grasp the language well enough to be able to tell you what happened but they're still able to put their findings down and maybe like I would ask them hey what does this picture mean so they can say it verbally because more than likely they'll be able to tell me why they drew it rather than write why they drew it my next one is the four through five this one's a little more serious the kids are trying to get ready to middle uh trying to transition to middle school um again we're started with our front-loading introduction um we're given our purpose, why are we doing this, our materials, and then our procedures. This one is bulleted or using one, two, three, and then your four is going to be your writing, five, six, seven, and then your analysis question. In this particular lab, they are the students are building something and writing down how they built it. So then when they switch papers, another another group of students can do it correctly. And our purpose is can you write a procedure that can be repeated by your classmates? And if you can look at number five, it says, why is it important that scientists write procedures that can be reproduced or replicated? So the purpose of this assignment is, why is it nice to use concise language? And this is a really good one for L's who struggle with concise language. This, this next two are from my personal campus, which were designated for L's. So they're very easy to look at, very easy to see, especially now this one's a chemical reaction. There's fire involved. So the, um, the directions are easy, simple. They don't require a lot of understanding. They know I will come and light your, it's an I do, you do, we do kind of thing. Um, they are telling me the front loading isn't as much words, but it's a chemical equation. What is the left side? What's the right side? Um, products and reactants or backwards reactants and products. They're given a place where they can write their observations and, again, their summaries. This next one is eighth grade. You're given your front loading. The front loading is actual words this time rather than pictorial. Or I say pictorial, but you know. 
they're, at, they're able to ask, what is the conservation of mass? Why is it hard to prove? What is the difference between open and closed system? They're given their objective is to find, um, is to prove the law. They're given materials, um, excuse me. And then this procedure is written in parts. So the first part is for open systems. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. And the next part is part two. It's one, two, three, four, five. Then there's a cleanup involved. Then your reflective statement is on the other side. You're asked what are reactants, what are products. And they're, um figured out like compare and contrast on number five was the same was the different and number six the whole conclusion did we prove the law of conservation of mass yes or no and then finally this is my high school sample it's um it's rather long it's very very intimidating if you just barely look at it there's a lot of words there's a lot of fill in the blanks there there's one pictorial and it's just kind of scary to look at. But once you read it, you see that you have your objective at the top. You're given your procedure in the next one, your purpose. And you're actually given a breakdown of part one and part two. Students here are asked to create more. They're able to draw, like in this um, graphic where it says draw an arch, a loop, a whirl. And it gives you the example so you know what a loop, a whirl, and arch are. But you're also asked to create graphs, like on this last picture, a graph of the percentage of students in worlds in the class. And why do you think this happened? You use the words accept or reject. You move more into the academic setting. And then they're given an extension piece to design their own experiment. So this one's a little more upper level. They're getting students used to the flow of writing and a report. Um, so my reflection question for all y'all is why do you think the reflection questions are put at the end of the report rather than the beginning? I know personally, me as a learner, I like to think with the end in mind. So when I like take a test or something, I look at the questions before I look at my procedures. So why do we not teach our students that this is what you are looking for? This is what you're thinking about while you're doing this, ex uh, this experiment. And a lot of my sources came from this article, or this teaching guide, is the teaching of language of lab reports. It's very interesting if you are a science teacher, which I think a few of y'all are. It was nice to see how we can incorporate language into science. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. I look forward to reading your discussions. Thank you and have a great day.